Hey guys, I'm Eric at AeroGuard Flight Training Center and today we are going to talk a little bit about an aeromedical factor uh, and that is hypoxia. So uh, the first thing that I want to kind of do is talk a little bit about the sort of symptoms, like what are the effects of hypoxia. And so over here I have some of those effects and I kind of want to walk through each of those, uh, talk a little bit about them, make sure we know what they are. Uh, and then what I want to do is dive into different types, or a better way to say that is maybe different causes of hypoxia. So uh, on, as far as the effects are concerned, first one listed here is headache, right? So I think everybody is familiar with what that is. Uh, another common one would be impaired judgment or increased response time. So you're slower and you're not really able to uh, do things as, as quickly as you could or you're not real good at making uh, good choices with the available information. Cyanosis is another common symptom. It's when like your lips or your fingernails get blue. Uh, drowsiness uh, and potentially something like numbness. So these are all kind of effects uh, of hypoxia and what's interesting is different people tend to experience hypoxia differently. Uh, so really the only way that you would know is uh, to maybe have the experience it yourself as to which of these effects uh, you'd be more prone to. Uh, a common example of what a lot of pilots would do in that case is visit something like an altitude chamber uh, where they can, they can depressurize this little room and ultimately you can sort of experience the effects uh, of hypoxia. So, now what I want to do is talk a little bit about different causes of hypoxia. In some cases they refer to them as the types of hypoxia, but the reality is it's easier to remember uh, how these four things are really just different causes for this hypoxia. So we'll dive into the first one with hypoxic hypoxia. As we get started with hypoxic hypoxia, I first want to talk a little bit about hypoxia and, and, and what, we're, what we're meaning, right? So this implies uh, that our body is unable or uh, in some way unable to get the oxygen that it needs. So our cells are in some way unable to, to get the oxygen that they need in order to continue to uh, function normally. Uh, and so each of these different types of hypoxia that we're going to talk about are really just different causes. So uh, in the case of hypoxic hypoxia, uh, what this implies is that there's an insufficient amount of oxygen available for us to breathe. So let's put that kind of to an example. Uh, the most common example that I think we can discuss would be something like altitude, which is really about air density, right? So as we climb in altitude, the air becomes less dense, which means uh, the same number of air molecules take up a larger volume of air. So another way to think about that is our lungs, which have a fixed volume or fixed size, uh, can only take in so much volume. If the air is less dense, then that means in that volume, there are less air molecules or specifically oxygen molecules available for our body to use. Uh, so examples of this that we might see uh, in, in regular lives would be people that climb very large mountains such as Mount Everest have to bring supplemental oxygen with them uh, on these journeys. Um, this would be true as well then in aircraft. If we fly to high enough altitudes, either we would need to utilize uh, some kind of supplemental oxygen or uh, we would need to pressurize the aircraft so that the, the air inside the cabin is uh, representative of a, of a lower or more dense uh, air. Kind of another interesting example uh, that is kind of, obviously it's more rare for sure, but it's a good example to kind of think of is something like if, if we were transporting dry ice uh, let's say we had we were transporting something that needed to be cold and we were transporting it in dry ice. If that container that the dry ice is in uh, is not well sealed, as that dry ice, uh, we say sublimates into a gas of, of CO2, that would be a larger molecule and therefore displace the oxygen. 
and, and sort of the result of that could be that there'd just be an insufficient amount of oxygen available in uh, the air. Um, once again, very rare examples, but something kind of interesting, I guess, to think about. Uh, so next, we'll talk about uh, the second cause on our list, which is hypemic hypoxia. Okay, so next, uh, we're over here to hypemic hypoxia, and what is what does that mean? Well, in this case, uh, we're talking about uh, the inability of, of oxygen to be transported by the blood, right? So hypemic hypoxia is, we have enough oxygen coming in to our lungs, but at some point the blood can't carry it to all of our extremities uh, to be used by the rest of our body's cells. All right, so let's think of some examples. I think probably the most common that we tend to discuss is carbon monoxide poisoning. So in the case of carbon monoxide poisoning, this could be uh, something like a, in, in something like a car or uh, general aviation airplanes that are piston driven exhaust, for example, finding a way to get into the aircraft uh, or into the vehicle. Uh, in that case, right, there is carbon monoxide in this uh, exhaust gas and therefore uh, we could potentially uh, receive sort of the results of this. Now, why that's relevant and, and a little bit different from uh, something like carbon dioxide is with carbon monoxide poisoning, uh, what happens is this carbon monoxide ultimately attaches to a part of your blood that's supposed to be carrying the oxygen, they call it a hemoglobin, and uh, it, it just stays attached, right? Because no cells of your body need to ever use it. So it never gets taken out of your blood or it, it doesn't get taken out very easily. Uh, and so it kind of just stays attached, which means your blood isn't really able to be as efficient as it should be. Uh, and therefore less and less oxygen can be transported. Uh, this is also true actually uh, when smoking, like with cigarettes. Uh, so another common example uh, would be something like that. An example, uh, another kind of example would be insufficient blood. So obviously if you uh, were cut severely and you were bleeding uh, significantly, uh, an insufficient amount of blood means that blood could, uh, there might not be enough blood to carry oxygen to all the parts of your body. Uh, but maybe a, uh, a slightly less thought of example there uh, is if you donate blood. Right? So we go in to uh, donate blood, you donate a significant volume of your blood. It, it doesn't just replenish immediately, it takes a lot of time for your body to ultimately replenish all of the blood that you've donated. In that time, you may be more susceptible to something like this hypemic hypoxia, something to kind of consider. Uh, other examples could be different blood diseases like uh, anemia or, or something like this. but. Uh, as far as it relates to maybe us as aviators, I think something like carbon monoxide poisoning is something to keep in mind, um, as well as, once again, actions that we take when we're not flying, for example, donating blood or, or something to this effect. Okay, uh, now we'll jump over and talk a little bit about the third uh, type of hypoxia, stagnant hypoxia. Now with stagnant hypoxia, we have oxygen in the blood, it's good to go, but it can't make it to the cells that need it. So in the case of stagnant hypoxia, we think of the word stagnant meaning like uh, stable or not moving, right? So uh, that's a, that, that, that would be a common example. So in this case, thinking of some of those examples, we can have some kind of restriction in our veins or our arteries, right? And so uh, this could be uh, as, as simple as, you know, when you sit down for too long, you sort of cut off blood flow and you stand up and you say, oh, my foot fell asleep. That's an example. Uh, or obviously uh, physiological issues uh, with your, your blood vessels themselves. Uh, this could also be something like a heart condition, possibly where your heart is unable to pump adequate volumes of blood. Uh, more common, I think, in the flying side of things is something like load factor. So if we were to do a, a high G maneuver, uh, blood will be forced to, to move down uh, towards the bottom. Or in, in our case, if we're sitting down, it would move out of our heads and down through our bodies uh, as low as it can go. 
So this obviously would be an, an exact example of uh, something causing the blood to not be able to flow to all the cells that need it. Uh, so I think these two are, are uh, pretty good examples of something like stagnant hypoxia, but uh, probably a little less likely if you're not doing a lot of uh, load factor during your particular flights. Uh, now we'll move on. We'll talk about our last, uh, last form of hypoxia, our last type called histotoxic hypoxia. All right, as you may have guessed from the word, uh, toxic, meaning like poisonous, histotoxic hypoxia is uh, a scenario where in which basically your cells are poisoned, right? And uh, what that means is we have oxygen-rich blood that makes it to the cell and says, here's your oxygen, and the cells say, nope, can't take that. Uh, and then they're unable to actually get the oxygen out of the blood. Usually it has something to do with cellular transference, but the, the, the whole point is uh, basically the cells, you can think of it, are, are saying, no, I don't need any of that oxygen. Uh, so most common causes are alcohol, as a great example. Uh, I think that uh, in the case of alcohol, uh, Any time you're consuming alcohol, this is the, the result of uh, a lot of the feelings that you get when consuming alcohol uh, are, are hypoxic feelings in a lot of cases, uh, and that is just a result of this histotoxic hypoxia. Uh, there are other drugs or poisons that would basically serve the same function, and it basically prohibits that cell from uh, collecting oxygen from the blood. This is why we have such tight restrictions in a lot of cases on the use of alcohol, for example, uh, in aviation. It can have dramatic effects uh, to our ability to, to, to operate safely. Uh, fantastic. So uh, real quick recap of what we've talked about so far. When talking about uh, ways that we can deprive our body's cells of oxygen, which is hypoxia, there's sort of four different uh, ways to do that, or four different types of hypoxia. And so, real quick, as a, as a sort of review, uh, hypoxic hypoxia meant that we didn't get enough oxygen into our bodies, so we were maybe unable to breathe enough oxygen, or there just wasn't enough oxygen available. Hypemic hypoxia meant that we had enough oxygen coming in, but it wasn't able to get into the bloodstream. Stagnant hypoxia means the blood could collect the oxygen, but then couldn't transport it to the cells that need it. And last, the histotoxic hypoxia is when uh, the oxygen-rich blood makes it to the cells, but the cells are unable to uh, collect it. So uh, in each of these cases, obviously we should be vigilant and ensure that we don't become susceptible. I would invite anyone who is a, a pilot to probably figure out where the nearest uh, uh, altitude chamber is and go have a, a, a try with experiencing hypoxia for yourself. Uh, I think it would help you understand the symptoms you would feel and maybe it would help you later on understand uh, if you ever started to feel those effects in flight. Fantastic. So hope you learned something from the video today. Once again, my name is Eric at AeroGuard Flight Training Center. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.